e5 on the board. Uh, you can't place that queen on those light squares that you've been talking about. Queen to f5 would be my move of choice. Uh, the oh. bishop to oh. and it's a big blunder. Oh. Wow. Well, it's going to trade queens. Just queen e4, yeah. Just looks looks completely winning, yeah. Oh my god, what happened there? I think he's just... I mean, uh, he just cracked, yeah? yeah? Completely cracked. I mean, that's pretty obvious as well. I mean, like, the pawns in the centre are just too strong. I think he was a little bit too relaxed there. I mean, going into these combinations when he didn't need to seemed like the first mistake, but the reason this is so bad is the Queen's come off, White's pawns, motor up the board. It's, it's yeah, it's going to be Armageddon. It's crazy. And uh, after all that good play as well. And Queen F5 <laughs> just felt like the most natural, the instant move that you want to make in the position, but it's the biggest blunder. You've got to explain this to us, uh, David. Why is this so bad? You take the Queen, you also get the Rook. Is there no way that you can fight against these central pawns? What's going on here? Yeah, simply it's all about the pawns here. Careless Caruana, he just didn't calculate because uh, now suddenly after the queen takes, yes, you take this rook, but it's not the fact necessarily that you take back. You can step forward first. Oh, my God. You're threatening to promote simply, threatening to run through with the pawns, forcing the black knight to go back. Only now do you take the bishop and uh, you're coming in with the white rook to collect everything. Black's king as well, just sidelined, unable to get back in time and... Uh, White's pawns forever are going to be a bone in your throat. These three connected past pawns in a moment, it's just over. You're frozen. And Fabiano doesn't dare go for this. Instead, he keeps the queens on temporarily uh, by playing g6. But it feels like this pawn is running through. I'm not sure if you trade queens first, but this pawn is running. I think he lost a bit of control before then. That, that was the problem. I and mean, he played he played beautiful game. And, uh, you know, that's, that's chess, so it can go wrong. And... Uh, there's a chance here, you know, he could get now knocked out of the competition. We saw, we see some more moves on the board and look at those white pawns. The white pawns are just too strong here, combined with a central pawn probably coming up the board as well at is, some point. Is there a chance that Fabi can just, um, and there we see it, retreat the knight and try to establish a blockade on those dark squares? I think he could have gone d4 there, maybe. Mm. I don't know. d4 was a very interesting try. This might be strong as well, um, but I think, he, yeah, this is probably winning as well. Mm. But. I'm just thinking, David, you have to at some point show us what was the way forward for Fabi because it felt like he was so close to wrapping this up. Uh, completely in control from the very start and one, and suddenly Nodebeck blitzing out his moves. He's feeling the confidence. He's picking up the pawns. Black's knight is jammed in the position. Uh, how does he win this? Does he also advance the D-pawn and connect the C-pawn to uh, the central... Uh, the central pawns that are already down the board? Yeah, connect them all. Just push that pawn now, pawn to d4. I think you called it there, Tanya. There we go. Now, not only is the white king coming in to support the pawns, but you have three connected past pawns, the c, d, and e pawns. They're just going to render the black pieces totally passive. Uh, they're going to paralyze those black pieces. And I think we're going to see that white king come in as well. Uh, this one is almost over. The black king is struggling. It's got kind of one arm blocking each white pawn here, but you can barely move as black. Eight seconds for Fabi as well. And also, in his mind, he's just thinking about how in control he was. This is such a difficult moment, actually. And just one move costs you the whole game. And we were just saying how impressive he's been all day. It can be a cruel game, right, Chess? I mean, you can play... A p These are the games that which are the most painful to lose. You play a perfect game, you outplay your opponent, you're about to go through, and then one move. It comes to one move, and your opponent just keeps that resourceful alive and well here um I, you know i think i know what he should do now oh. i think it's come to that point <laughs> fabiano it has you oh just need to God. resign my friend this is hard just resign and now the f pawn's gonna connect but you can't go f5 just yet he gives he, a check uh, not a did you see check. and did you see the shift in his body language he just leaned forward the moment he saw queen f5 on the, the board but these guys are sharks <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah Beautiful. that's what we want to oh. see <laughs> tactics Good. yeah and you can resign now just resign yeah, just resign this time oh. he's going to be very annoyed with that with this game i mean this is uh these are the more painful games. When you get outplayed oh the whole game and you lose, it's not so bad because you're like... That's the, you know, and not a bad yeah. react after that big win for Fabiano Caruana. He was so close at taking this. One mistake and it was all undone. Which means that we do get two Armageddons. And this was not a bad after his comeback victory against <laughs> Fabiano Caruana. He can't believe it himself. He's done it. So sharp. Oh, yeah, the relief on his face there. He even shook his head and uh, kind of whispered, muttered something. I want to know what he said there, but I think he was uh, praising uh, the powers that be, maybe the chess gods, just saying, okay, thank you.
I survived. Yeah, survives to play the Armageddon. What a day of action this has been.